How you doing? Justin here. Today we are going to check out how to use your thumb and your first finger to strum on the guitar. It's a fantastic technique with stacks of potential. It can start relatively simple as a substitute for regular strumming, but it's really easy to incorporate the backbeat, this little hit on two and four, which kind of gives it a bit of a percussive feel. But it can also go way further off in the distance where you can end up picking out full melody notes using other fingers as well. You would have heard like Paul McCartney use it for Blackbird. Uh, it's in uh, modern alt-rock classics like Follow You Into the Dark by Death cab for cutie neil young uses it a lot songs like unknown legend where you're kind of picking out a melody note while you're strumming at the same time it's super handy so let's get to a close-up and check out a few different ways of using this very cool technique so let's start off with a C chord in the fretting hand, remembering to mute the thicker string there. Now the basic deal here is that thumb is going to play the bass note of the chord. So it'll be the fifth string for C, A minor, B minor, those type of chords, anything with a fifth string root. It'll be playing the thicker string for like G and E, and it would play the fourth string for D type chords. F chord would either be the thicker string or the fourth string. So thumb is always going to play the bass on beats one and three. On the and, after one, you're going to do an up strum with the first finger. So you have one and, okay? You use the fleshy part of your finger to do an up pick, and this is pretty important. On beat two, you're going to use your first finger, but play with your nails. And you can hear straight away the difference here between thumb is nice and round, round, and then that two becomes a lot brighter, and then you're going to have another up strum with the first finger, and that pattern gets repeated. So really slowly, we have one and two and three and four and one and two and three four and one and two and three and At this point, I'm not adding any specific percussive hit. I'll show you how to do that in just a sec. But you'll hear that the strum on beats two and four with the down stroke of the first finger is a bit brighter because we're using our nail. And that's emulating the snare drum that a drummer would usually play on beats two and four. A kind of a standard drum groove, if you'll excuse my hopeless beatboxing. It's kind of like a, you know, do, ka, do, ka, do, ka, do, do, ka, do, two, three, and four, and one, two, Three and four and one, two. That two and the four is really, really important. And when you when you play it, when you're using that as part of your strumming, it kind of makes what you're playing feel a little bit more rhythmic, like you're being a you know at least aware of the groove a little bit. We really are copying a kind of a standard drum pattern here, where we're using the thumb to replicate the bass drum. The, the kick drum, and the first finger to emulate the snare. And the fact that we've got a, a strum on every beat and the off beats as well is much like a hi-hat, that thing, which would usually be on all of them. So standard, you know, straight eight drum pattern would have the, the hi-hat, the little closed together symbols, would be on one and two and three and four and. And because we're playing on all of the beats and all of the ends, it very much has that kind of a drum groove, particularly if I take the chord away and just do the same thing now, but I'm just muting all the strings. You'll hear... One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It really has got that kind of a drum feel to it. This, incidentally, is a great thing to practice, just keeping all of the strings muted, making sure you get that. Really trying to make it feel good. That's the important thing, especially, you know, if you're a drummer, the whole point is getting in the groove. It's not just about doing it technically correct. It wants to feel nice. So you want to practice something like that over and over again and really concentrate on relaxing, trying to... Yeah, make it feel comfortable and groovy and lock in. Can really help with playing along with great tracks as well, songs with terrific groove that you really enjoy. Just playing along, even if you don't know the chords, right? Just playing along like this with your favorite songs and getting into the feeling of it, trying to suck in that time feel to make it feel nice to you. It's really, really important. So let's apply that to a very common chord progression, maybe C to G, A minor to F. Very, very common progression. So we'd have one.
definitely recommend taking like a common chord progression like that that you will find used in many many songs try it though at a few different tempos so that was kind of like a middle tempo it definitely works a lot quicker as well and it works a lot slower too You'll see there I was also adding a little bit of a shuffle because it works with this kind of a shuffle as well as straight. The difference a shuffle has that do 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 like a skip. That feeling whereas straight will be do da 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 Both of those things work. It's a very, very versatile little trick this. One thing I love to add in here is a bit more of a hit on beats two and four, and we can do that by using the palm of our hand, just hitting into the strings. You can hear there, just literally, it's this, the strings right here, hitting on the frets, that gives you a little click. Now with a bit of practice, you'll find that you can hit with the palm and flick with the first finger at the same time. So you get... So I'm just hitting down, and at exactly the same time, my first finger is flicking, I'm getting the hit. So what was sounded before like this, one and two and three and four and one. Now we can get there. You can do it with varying degrees of strength. It depends on the speed and lots of other things as well. You need to practice this motion. It's almost like I relax my finger. As my hand hits down, it flicks my finger out. So... There's just the hit by itself. There's the hit by itself. Put the two together. Let's add that into our chord progression now. That technique is likely to take a little bit of practice. It is about trying to figure out the mechanics of that hit down with the flick at the same time. Just practicing getting that kind of flicking out with your finger while you're doing the hit. It's not that difficult and once you get it, it's a really, really useful technique to get down. Another thing that I really enjoy with this particular technique is adding an alternating bass on one and three. It's very common in a country kind of a thing to have the bass moving from the root note of the chord to the fifth of the chord on beat three. So we play the, in the case of a C chord, we be playing the note C on beat one and then a G on three. The rest of the technique works great still, but when you separate that bass out, it really starts to sound a little bit more like we're trying to copy the bass and the drums and the guitar all together, because you've got the bass, the snare drum hit, and then the percussion guitar going on the top, the strumming. I should point out here that for the C chord, the or any of the fifth string root chords, really, we go from the thicker string, uh, from the fifth string over to the thicker string to find the fifth. Same with the A chord, it'd be the open A string to the open low E string. When you've got a, a particularly if you're playing a bar chord with the thicker string root, the bass note goes from the thicker string to the fifth string with a 
G though, if you're playing an open G, the fifth is actually open on the open D, so the thumb is going to move from the thicker string to the fourth string. But you can actually play, if you're going to play a G chord with the second finger down, of whatever the fingering you're using, the note on the fifth string, if you're going to play that, you could alternate that. That works nice too. nice little kind of an addition that if you've gone to the trouble of practicing this te technique you're already able to control the string that your thumb is picking it's a nice addition it does have kind of a country or an old country kind of a vibe going on but that I think it works real great this technique is a great foundation skill and you'll find as you get more confident with it that you can start adding in a lot of embellishments, bass movements, you can start to pick out melody notes using the other fingers as well. At this point I'd recommend you just stick with your thumb and your first finger, you really work on getting the groove right, getting that backbeat hit sorted out, but as soon as you're through that you can start adding melodic elements using chord embellishments and then the other fingers to pick out notes on any of the beats and you can combine it all together to the point where you can play melodies for the songs while you're playing the bass line and you're keeping the strumming going with the backbeat here. It's a really, really cool technique. I wouldn't jump the gun and try and rush into it. Develop a strong foundation first with this thing, and as you you know continue on with my courses, you're going to find more of this stuff where we add in these uh, melodic percussive elements to our plan. I really hope you enjoyed that and you're enjoying the rest of the Grade 3 module. If you happen to be over on YouTube, really appreciate hitting the subscribe button, the like, all of that sort of stuff, but head on over to the website the grade three course is rocking along really nicely now loads of great material lots of support stuff over there and of course you can get help with the commenting and the community and all of that stuff as well if you haven't explored it in a while it's you know made some pretty incredible changes over the last year so uh anyway really hope you enjoyed it i'll see you for plenty more very soon you'll take care out there bye bye